back in ETV. What's up guys, Xavier here with you on Balcony TV, Los Angeles. I'm here with Keith from Atlas Genius. How are you, bro? Doing well, how are you doing? Great, man. What song are you going to be playing for us today? This is uh, the first single off from our new album called Molecules. Perfect, dude. Take it away. Molecules from the dead We liberate inanimate objects Is this a path of will up ahead Or are we just destined to get what we get Trying to see our face Like never before Even the mistakes Thank you so much, man. Dude, Thank you, you can really much. see the uh, where the song came from. I mean, obviously the full recording sounds absolutely nothing like that. It's cool to see the bare bones of the song. This is true. Um, I always think that, that, exactly like you say, that when you strip everything back, if the song still works, uh, then, you know, you, it's okay. And it did. You sort of had everyone sort of in a gentle sway to sound like everything was all right for just a couple of minutes. <laughs> that was for me, the, anyway. That was the aim, really. Dude, so tell me, I, I heard you say, I mean, the song's called Molecules. I heard you say the, the, the phrase inanimate objects yeah. a couple of times through there. It's obviously also the name of the album that just dropped on August 28th. Correct. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell me about the connection with that phrase. Like, it's made it into a song. It's made it, it's obviously important enough to 
you to make the name of the album. How does it resonate and what does it mean? Well, I think that uh, it means a bunch of things to us, but as we were writing the album, um, going from a band that was touring for 18 months to then going to the studio for over a year, mm-hmm. it, it kind of, we felt like inanimate objects, you know, yeah. like just being, uh, you know, that cabin fever that sets in when you've been in one room just working on something for, for a long time. So we, we kind of felt uh, that, that kind of represented <laughs> what we were doing yeah. uh, for that period of time. And uh, I heard along the grapevine, so you went back to your uh, hometown an hour south of Adelaide to write that, um, yeah, write that record. That's true. After 18 months on the road, living the high life all over the world, how did it feel to go back to your little hometown in Adelaide? <laughs> it was good for a few weeks, but then the isolation and the loneliness set in, you, I mean, as you can imagine, yeah. like, you, you know, you live here as well. And, and there's so much stimulation, especially being on the road touring yeah. as well. Yeah. And then all of a sudden to be in the same house that sure. you grew up in, you know, like where the studio was. Um, it was, it felt pretty isolated. Sure. And, and so we spent a few months there and then uh, we, we just decided we had to come back to LA to yeah. finish the album. I f- and uh, obviously I've heard, I've read reviews and like listened to, obviously listened to the first album and the second album. The second album obviously is, has an underlying tone of just, is a lot darker as you, as you probably describe as the first one. Would yeah. you, do, would you say that's because of those feelings, those sort of mixed up feelings of getting off the road? Yeah. After uh, this tour? It was a mixture of, Touring and playing songs live. That yeah. when you like, the first album is is certainly not as um, aggressive as this album. Yeah. And there's a tendency like that that we wanted to, as we were playing these songs live. You wanted them to be just a little bit rocky, a little bit more yeah. in your face. Um, and we kind of tweaked them as we were touring. Yeah. And so when we went back to do this album, we thought, well, let's let's make sure that we remember that when we were writing this album that we're yeah. gonna there's, there is this tendency to want to f- to make them. Um, uh, a little bit more bombastic, a little bit more aggressive. Sure. Um, so we we did that in the studio rather than waiting until we started touring. Got yeah. And uh, when you were, you know, learning guitar as a kid, did you ever think you'd be putting out an album years later that would be uh, categorised as synth pop? Is that a surprise? <laughs> yeah, it is. A, it is a surprise, especially if you'd gone back 15 years ago and told told younger me that, that this is what you'll be doing. I think you know, like, I grew up. I was a you know, I was a grunge kid yeah. you know like a lot of us were mm-hmm. growing up in the 90s and and so synth was a dirty word yeah you know? and, and it was only i think what happened though was then guitar just got so um so boring like as far as like you know through the 2000s and early uh you know well 2000s 90s and 2000s the guitar just got thrashed and yeah. and this sy- synthesizer that was just thrown away yeah. cast aside as a result of the excess in the 80s um suddenly seemed appealing yeah. to a lot of artists, including us, yeah. where you're looking for... And the thing about a synthesizer is it's so um, versatile. I mean, sure. it's as, I mean, it's as, as many sounds as you can come up with. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it is... I guess it's borderline synth pop, but... Yeah. Yeah, it is it's surprising. It's, I mean, dude, it, it works. It's perfect for you. My next question that I've always wanted to ask you guys, I remember exactly where I was when I heard Trojans. Where was right? it? I was driving home from work on Beverly Boulevard, which is just down there, guys. And I was like, oh, oh my God. Oh my God, what the hell is this? Get it in my face right now. So I'm like holding one hand with the, uh, I'm holding my, like the steering wheel. I'm shazamming the hell out of it. And I'm like, and I read out and I'm like, these guys are from Adelaide and I'm from Melbourne. So that was like a big deal. And, And obviously hearing you guys on the radio, that riff just like, it haunted my dreams for weeks, right? I love it. The guitar riff or the bass riff? The guitar riff. Right, okay. And I was like, for one, I'm like, oh my god. Second, I'm like, why didn't I write that? Holy hell, there's a lot of emotions going on on that drive. <laughs> Tell me how you uh, how you guys wrote that. How how that song came? Was it was it written around that riff? Um, well, it started out as a as a set of chords and, and, a, and a tempo. You yeah. Know? Um, and we had a bunch of songs that we were working on, and um, there's nothing particularly magical about those chord yep. that chord progression. I mean, it's a chord progression that's been used in a bunch of songs over the years. Um, it's, it's how you dress it up. Sure. Just like a lot of songs, it's how, how do you produce it? What, what do you put around those chords? Yep. And I remember, um, I remember the, the, the intro guitar riff came right at the beginning uh, of the process. And you were uh, like, oh, this feels good. Keep doing that. Well, it, it was okay, but it, the, the drums were different. So, mm-hmm. and then when Michael changed the drums six months later, mm-hmm. um, that kind of fell into place. And it was one of those songs that just we just sort of worked away at it, chipped away, and you know, it's like a block of marble. You don't know what's in there, and and uh, sometimes it, there's nothing of any value mm-hmm. in, in that block of marble, and sometimes there's a you know, there's a hit song good. in there's the a US. Hit song. So, you know, uh, it was a pro- like it, I remember like where we were when the when the, the other guitar riff uh, was written. Yeah, it, 
But I don't remember where I was when uh, the chorus line came to me. That's yeah. that's weird. I, I, I was thinking about this the other day. Normally, we'll circle back with you on that. Normally, I'm very, I'm very like, okay, I remember where I was when I read yeah. that, but I don't remember where I was. Yeah, yeah. When Trojans was nice, written. man. Well, okay, thank you for filling me in there. I've always wondered. You, you're that. welcome. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. But uh, all right. So all that aside, you've uh, said the album came out on August August 28th. You've just you've on a little break from tour. All right now, what's coming up here on out for you? Uh, well, two weeks off of touring. We go back out uh, in the middle of, of this month. Yeah. And then uh, in the time off, I'm doing some writing with some other artists um, in LA, which is the great thing about living yeah. in this fine city yeah. is that um, at the moment, it's such a such a great artist, artistic community yeah. where I feel like it rivals any city in the world right now for that. Definitely. Definitely, man. And then obviously just aside from that world domination and that's what's keeping you busy. Um, you know, that's just a side um, uh thing just so like, working passion. on a bit of um, domination yeah or cool. dominatrix cool Should we? do we have anything more to add to that uh, off camera yeah, cool I'll talk about it later awesome man well dude I want to say thank you so much for hanging thank out with us on the balcony Atlas Genius guys this is Keith my name is Xavier Brinkman you're watching Balcony TV Los Angeles catch you later cheers Balcony TV